Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Dragon starting as the, or sorry, bottom left hand corner. We have Dragon starting as the Teal Protoss Upper Left Hand Corner. We have Striker starting as the Brown Zerg. I believe this is King of the Hill style, so winner stays. So Striker beating Raz. This is game three from the games of August 20th of the kind of, I guess Gypsy is calling it the NA Pro League, which they're kind of, feels like they're a little bit more like pickup games that are happening than just individual individuated teams that are kind of separating out. But basically, North American team battles to kind of hone skills, see each other's build order, see each other's out. And I actually love these matches and I hope they do more of this. One, because I want more of this content, but which I keep saying, I know I keep repeating that, but it's like emphasis. By the way, check out both these guys, Striker17, I think it's Striker 17 SC on Twitch and Dragon BW on Twitch. Check them both out when they are streaming. Pylon at the natural expansion for Dragon. It looks like he's going to scout to the right. I think this is on, yeah, this is on Polypoid. I think a Kakaru just, there was a hallucinated thing that exploded there. And I just got the tail end of it. Uh, a bunch of people in the upper left hand corner. So we'll kind of close that. It looks like we are seeing a pool opener from Striker in the upper left. Unfortunately, so usually the Overlord, so I think the Overlord was hoping to see a Probe Scout making its way across, although it wasn't kind of hugging that right wall to see it. Uh, but he is going to be able to move up and see that pile. And the question is, is what timing will the Zerglings have once this spawning pool is popped uh, to kind of see this natural? So basically, he's going to get the scout. But oftentimes, you'll see a drone kind of move out, although he could have been scouting with the Zerglings. We'll see. I'm getting ahead of myself. Overlord in production right there. We are seeing a Forge first opener for Dragon, so he'll be safe regardless. It looks like he's sending out a second Probe Scout, just to make absolutely certain. Because I have seen Zerg do this this style of thing, where even when they're doing the Zergling opener, which is like, I'll just scout with the Zerglings I got, and kind of play it that way. Um, this does put him in a more aggressive set, so it looks like, okay, the timing of it, he is, oh, and I can't do the clicky thing, but he is going to see that Forge on that natural expansion. Dragon did manage to sneak up with this probe, it looks like he's going to go ahead. He wants to try to do a little bit of harassment. Is able to force a hatchery cancellation, but the Zerglings are going to come out momentarily, which is going to... Oh, got it again! Nice play on Dragon's part, but now that the Zerglings are here, uh, he's going to go ahead and back off. Ooh, Pylon Blockade does have two cannons morphing into the front. That's going to stop those Zerglings, so Striker going to have a little bit of potential map control, but Dragon feeling very, very safe with those two cannons on his front. The Overlord actually, this is an interesting play from Striker. He actually, rather than keeping the Overlord over the natural expansion, he's actually just diving it into the main and wants to camp it there to get additional scouting information. And actually that probe did enough harassment that it, that Striker opted to go ahead and take his 12 o'clock hatchery first, which definitely suggests he's going into more of a Hydralisk opener build. I don't know, potentially, we'll see. Extractor is up. The Zergling's having some trouble tracking down this probe. Even with the six Zerglings, actually, this is some nice play on Dragon to keep this probe alive. Because usually with six Zerglings and a player of, of uh, Striker's caliber, this is a death knell very, very rapidly. But he's going to go ahead and keep it alive as long as possible. He wants to make sure he does because he doesn't want it. Cause the more, the, basically, the longer you keep this probe scout alive, the more information you can glean the, uh, as far as just when that hat, when the extractor's taken, whether two extractors were taken, whether, you know, all that information just lets you cut corners in your build and get ahead. And this probe actually able to not only escape, but it's gonna be able to escape and check this 12 o'clock location. So Dragon getting a, an immense amount of information. So he knows he's up against a three hatch opener. It looks like we are seeing the Hydralisk and plop down. So I believe we're gonna see some form of 973 uh, style build. I do like what Striker did moving this Overlord towards the front so he can go ahead and get eyes and essentially know what his opponent is kind of sneaking up to. Hydralis Den uh, going to be up there momentarily. Because of that 12 o'clock expansion delay, though, I think that and that's going to delay a bit of the... And this is kind of interesting. I feel like the timing of this is off. I'd have to go look at the, the build order timing precisely. But it looks like that Hydralis Den went up a little bit earlier and he's getting Hydra, Hydralis speed a little bit sooner in... Uh, in this variation. So we'll call this the striker variation. We'll see how it plays out. We do have two drones at the 12 o'clock. Already some Zerglings camped out near that natural. This probe scout's still alive. And the critical thing is, is if this probe can just stay alive for, I mean, it's not going to be able to get back in the main, but if it sees any, as soon as it starts seeing Hydralisks popping at various locations, he'll, I mean, it'll be a big indicator. When to drop cannons, things like that. And you can just continue to push that tech in the, uh, in the meantime. It looks like the one downside of having this Overlord 
uh, towards the main, even though it sees that Stargate, it might end up being fodder as far as a follow-up. And I think Dragon absolutely knows at this stage that, yeah, he's going up against some form of, of a Hydralisk bust. So sees the six six drones there at the natural expansion. So there's three there. It looks like there's going to... And now the Hydralisk is actually being produced. So this is not uh, seven. This is... So producing Hydralisk is a little bit earlier. Now getting range. But they have speed. So this is kind of interesting play. So usually you, you definitely want that range to kind of reach over those the cannon lines. So I'm wondering if this is... And I think this is just going to be a pure all-in. Because this is what... The speed early, what that's going to allow is those Hydralisks to just get in position that much faster. Four Zelts pushing off some initial troops on the front lines. There is an initial Corsair down. Citadel of Dune dropping. But this is only a single gateway worth of units. So it's going to come down to Dragon dropping a lot of cannons to try to defend this. Is going to need to... And he's already dropping those Photon Cannons now. Very wisely doing so. But... As far as a follow-up, so Striker's definitely going to be able to get that gateway down. Let's see if he can reach that forge, if he can just pocket that forge in. Now diving in, going for that initial cannon. Dragon reacting, getting those zealots off the front line. Range is going to finish momentarily. And it's going to be cannons versus hydralisks as far as this follow-up. And honestly, I think Dragon might need to pull probes. And that was the only active gateway. Two additional gateways plopping down in the background. Oof. I'm almost wondering if one of the it would have been better to go for an additional cannon, one less gateway. That forge now getting assailed. I don't. I think he should just cancel the weapons one now, and go ahead and plop yet another cannon down. He's going to need to get that forge back up. So this is going to be looks like seven cannons on the front door. Will it be enough to defend? More hydralisks making the way across. The corsair going ahead and seeing a tech to lair. Still a lot of Hydralis grouping there. Oh, that Corsair makes out with just a sliver of health, and that is huge, actually. And so Striker doing that initial damage. He's kind of playing half Z's here. He's going ahead and grabbing some additional hatchery. He's going up to, it looks like, four hatchery, and he is grabbing Lair. It's potentially, potentially going to sneak to a tech switch. He hasn't grabbed a second gas at any location just yet. He has a lot of Hydralisks on the front door still, but perhaps seeing all of those cannons planted down and actually grabbing a fifth hatchery now, perhaps seeing all of those cannons down on the front from Dragon, doesn't want to press his luck. There's the Evolution Chamber. And he's just going to try to settle back into a standard game from here and utilize the advantages he has as far as a follow-up. But this Corsair has got to be a hero, though. It's got to go in and see kind of the Spire timings, things like that, uh, as far as a follow-up. We do have Zelt Leg Speed being... Um, this is one thing I want to say for Striker's play, and one thing I've seen him utilize is that I've, a lot of players I think have neglected is oftentimes he will get up to this Lair Tech, he will go ahead and get a Spire, he will go ahead and get um, some of that tech in the mid-game. It looks like he's actually opting to, rather than bothering with the Spire, he's just going to go ahead and grab additional gas. Corsair now being taken out that 12 o'clock location does manage to see that third gas being grabbed. But it looks like rather than bothering with Spire, this is just going to be Lurker Tech, and so this is going to turn to just a straight... Uh, I think this is going to be an attempt at a Lurker Contain with a potential Spire follow-up. The Spire is being built someplace, if I can go ahead and find it. There it is, at the Natural Expansion. But this is, yeah, this is the portion of the game where I feel like Striker, oftentimes what he'll do is he'll look for those opportunities where he can use the strong ability to tech switch from Zerg to punish his opponents. Dragon, in the meantime, has a myriad of Zealots on his front door. Four gateways in the background. Does have weapons one. A double Forge also in the background. Templar Archives working along the ways, and he's scooting out those zealots. Wanted to catch that timing just before I missed it. He's going to go ahead and push those Hydralisks off the front. But I think Striker has enough out here to go ahead and repel a lot of this. This is going to force a lot of additional troops. The zealots now marching towards that natural expansion, a decent Sim City already in place. A third hatchery being plopped at that 12 o'clock location. And the Hydralisks actually... So a couple Lurkers being morphed, and I love this. Using the Lurker, A's to, Lurker Eggs to blockade that natural expansion. The Zelt's now flooding out to the right. Also using a, an additional Lurker Egg to block the ramp up to the 12 o'clock location. Clever play from Striker to buy himself some time. We do have a robotic facility warping in here in the background someplace. There's a the robotic facility with the observatory to go ahead and deal with the follow-up Lurker tech. He was able to also open up this front door. Some cannons being dropped to go ahead and allow the troops to go ahead and flood out. Dragon in a pretty decent position uh, as far as follow-up. It's still anyone's game. 
And I do like that he's putting down some pre uh, preventatory cannon right there, and he's also got this preventatory cannon, just in case there was a tech switch there. The Zealots engaging a bit of lurkers across that third base. I'm wondering if Striker is just going to... Is he going to go for the contain? Honestly, I feel like he would be better suited just going ahead and using kind of the map control he has to go ahead and drop some additional lurkers before Dragoons are in play. Go ahead and grab an additional base. Looks like he is, in fact, doing so. Weeding my mind. And grabbing that mineral only. I guess he was, like, way ahead on that. A couple of Mulisks moving out. I. Here's the thing. This is only one cannon. Some probes can be assaulted. Also, these Mulisks can, you know, free reign on... The Zealot army. It looks like the Zealots do see them coming, but it's going to come down to a well-placed Psy Storm to really disrupt these Mutalisks. So Cannon right there, they're backing off. The Zealots regrouping back into two base, and I love what Striker's done in the meantime. He's also got that 9 o'clock base and the 6 o'clock base kind of camped in and trying to deny. Basically, his stage of play is I'm going to go up to four bases, I'm going to macro up, I'm going to hit basically the unlimited Sauron Zerg style of play. Sauron not in the actual build style, but just having the overwhelming attack force and overwhelming economy. I also like that Striker, even though he built these meals, some players with this is they'll just dive in. They'll be like, oh, I built them anyway. Let me go ahead and lose them. But he's just using them to both scout and also provide kind of that threat and harassment. Bunch of gateways back here for Dragon. Level 1 weapons is coming online. As is level 1 armor. But... Striker continues to plop down additional hatcheries. He's going to go ahead and sit. It looks like, so what is this? So three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, up to eight hatcheries already. Has overlord speed, which is going to allow him to pick off a couple of these observers in space. It is just, you, you have Dragoon Zealots and High Templar to follow this up, but even supply momentarily, but that's 59 drones for Striker. Within, I don't know, a minute? Striker can basically just translate this into a massive amount. Looks like I missed a Psy Storm across those Mutalisks as they were kind of diving around. The Mutalisks looking for a High Templar to go ahead and pick off. Not able to do so. Dragon doing a pretty good job of keeping this army cohesive and protecting these critical High Templar and Psy Storm. He's starting to move up towards Striker's mineral only. But Striker, I'm waiting for him to just start pumping out units with the economy he's got. Another big army following this up, but Dragon just has such a huge ground army that I, if he places Psy Storms well and protects his observers, I don't know that Striker's going to be able to repel it. Starting to move up, blanketing Psy Storm, not catching a lot of units right there. Striker being very patient with this, just allowing the Lurkers to do their thing over the high ground. High Templar getting picked off some Dragoons, having some trouble engaging this as well. Now the Zealots cycling back around. Another Psy Storm. But Striker, you can see, he's not keeping his units in position where they can just get blanketed and basically forcing it to just be a single side storm for a single lurker. The Mulus pushing in, not quite able to pick off the High Templar there. And now that that's cleared out, he's going ahead and reinforcing. Very, very patient with this defense. And that might be the difference. Dragon's still trying to push into this. He's got a large army, but those side storms have been dropped. He's only gotten a handful of Zerglings and a few lurkers apiece. And more lurkers continuing to fill in on the high ground against these Dragoons, and now that the Psystorm's been expended, the rest of the Zerglings starting to flood in, the rest of the Lurkers reinforcing. The Observer's still standing there, so this is still spotted. The Dragoons trying to attack from the high ground, but just with a very gentle touch and a high ground advantage and constant reinforcement, Striker repelling this attack thus far. And now Dragon pulling back, looking for a re-engagement point. He is going to be able to take out the, those Mutalisks as they were kind of hanging out there to the corner. Uh, to the corner. It looks like Mineral... Only going up for Dragon in the interim. He's going to go ahead and take a 6 o'clock as well. While those attacks were diving in. But a beautiful defense from Striker. And even with grabbing these two additional bases. And with this large standing army. I worry about Dragon's ability to basically outproduce Striker. After this army. Uh, after this army has been dealt with. Good size storms on the high ground. Catching a lot of Hydralisks and Zerglings in that regard. Dragon, I think, realizes he needs to do something to slow Striker's economy down. And I think this is kind of the swing he's hoping for, is let me grab two bases while I'm attacking here. Keep him at bay. Some Zerglings have snuck through, by the way. They might be able to get into that 6 o'clock location. And let me force Dra or Striker to build a lot of attack forces. It looks like, yeah, more going to go ahead and pincer this, this Dragoon Zealot army in on a swing. The Zerglings now taking out the 6 o'clock base as well. So the Mineral only did get up, but the 6 o'clock base is going to get taken down. 
So it's still going to be four bases versus three, and Stryker honestly can take... Yeah, he can just kind of slow play, take out this army in the upper right -hand corner of this Hydralisk, or sorry, this High Templar, without any energy to provide some support. And Stryker just playing a really patient game here. Go ahead and expend your Psy Storms on units against high ground, and I'm just going to wipe out your army, wipe out your bases with a backstab, and then just continue to macro up, really controlling the game. I like the observers are kind of pinning on these uh, lurkers as they're moving across the map. They, or maybe the lurkers are pinning on the observers, actually. Let's see if an overlord can get in position to go ahead and pick them off. But Dragon, yeah, he has his mineral only up, but Striker, just with strong map control, he's going to go ahead and grab an upper right hand base to continue to push forward economically. And yeah, I just really, I got to say it again, I really enjoy this style. Another size from getting expended, but really not catching as much of an army, much of the Zerg army as he was hoping to. Dragon regrouping with another attack horse is going to catch a latent drone that was wandering out in no man's land. I think the drone just wanted to see the world. He was, he was, this is the problem with that drone. He's like, I am done with this war. I just want to go explore the world. And then he split off and ran into the, arm, uh, the army anyway and ended up, getting picking, <laughs> ended up getting picked off. Poor guy. Some more drones moving up. It looks like Dragon is going to be able to get an observer into that upper end corner to at least know he's going up again against an additional base. Trying to get a lot of cannons down here at that 6 o'clock once again. Striker moving a lot of his army, kind of spreading across the map. And this is, again, that kind of soft pocket I was talking about previously, where he's got that kind of catcher's mitt thing, where he's kind of... He's almost playing it like a Terran, to be honest, where he's got lurkers kind of spread out across midfield. He's just trying to absorb this army wherever it's at and force better exchanges overall. Right now, though, Dragon catching a nice pocket to go ahead and perhaps deliver some good side storm. Got one nice side storm right there. Great side storm! Catching a lot of Zerglings, a Lurker, and some Hydralisks there to the north. And Dragon regrouping, trying to protect the 6 o'clock. Striker going to go ahead and deny. It looks like that mineral only along that right-hand side. He does have that upper right-hand base up. It is not quite saturated. But Striker can go ahead and continue. He's already 30 supply ahead. Oof. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. So about even, close to even, in upgrades, and he's just going to be able to swarm as he continues to move towards the 200 supply. Just, yeah, 200, two lurkers, handful of lurkers here just delaying things. It looks like Dragon going ahead and moving across that mineral only. He wants to try to cut this map in half, go ahead and get additional bases, and try to stay in this economically. But Striker continuing to move up towards that 200 supply count is about 25 supply ahead. It looks like Dragon is able to engage... Oof. Zealots on top of these lurkers. It looks like those lurkers are going to get wiped out. Some nice side storms this time. We do have a defiler as part of this army, which is going to make those dragoons. And it, we'll see if there's a plague. It looks like plague is being researched. Zerglings and lurkers flooding from the left-hand side want to pin this army in and wipe it out. Dragon also trying to establish some expansion. Actually, underneath that overlord, very brave. Defiler actually just walking straight through this army. With these overlords, I think that's a missed rally point. There are a lot of High Templar here. It doesn't look like a lot of... Okay, there is plenty of Psy Storm in them to go ahead and repel the difference. So this, if there could be some amazing Psy Storms, maybe Dragon can retake some map control here in the middle. And it looks like he is, in fact, doing so with the Archons and everything else. A bit of a missed rally from Striker overall. And so Striker actually not... This is kind of a critical swing, so is pushing up in tech. Really needs to pick off... These High Templar, these Lurkers group, that getting wiped out. Some Zerglings trying to dive in, but they're meeting some Zealots right there. So Dragon, even though he's a little bit behind in supply, is able to go ahead and establish this bottom right-hand corner. Some Zerglings flooding through. If a Defiler gets there and there's some Swarm, that should be all she wrote there. Swarm and a constant grouping of Lurkers pushing that army back across midfield and preventing it from providing some reinforcement to this bottom right hand base. Striker really needs to keep this from going up. There's the swarm, which should be it for this bottom right hand base. Dragon trying to reinforce across the middle of the map. There's a lot of lurkers interrupting and that's forcing a lot of side storms to be expended. You can just see the brown slowly moving across the map to provide some reinforcement. And while this is happening, while this base is under assault, you've got addition the base being saturated in the upper right, that natural expansion being grabbed. Striker just absolutely everywhere, staying on top of this. The Zerglings on top of the Dragoons. It looks like the High Templar out of Psy Storm by the time they've made it to this bottom right-hand corner. A bunch of Lurkers being morphed in. So the base 
under assault. I do not believe it is going to stand, even with these just two Zerglings and a handful of reinforcements coming in for Striker. This this has got to be a, ter a terrifying sight for this High Templar. Just seeing everything morphed in. You can't even slap. You can't even slap the Lurkers right there. You just got to watch them morph in and eventually kill you. And Striker not being satisfied with taking out that bottom right hand base. He's going to continue to sneak in to this 6 o'clock location. Dropping a swarm right there so the Zerglings can get on top of the cannon. Some more Psy Storm. Lurker is marching in as well. And I think that's going to be it for this 6 o'clock base. As well. Let's see if he can defend it. The Defiler looks like it is going to get picked off. The Lurker is actually still standing. And that, yeah, dragging in a call GG right there. Well played by Striker, top to bottom. I feel like there were some opportunities for Dragon to take that match. But Striker just ended up, yeah. He got the economy established. He kind of flipped that switch. And again, just played a really, really precise defensive play uh, against his Protoss opponent, against Dragon, and just was able to truly really push the match from there. I, am, I honestly feel like what might have suited Dragon better is, is having that army there as a threat and just going ahead and establishing additional bases rather than pushing that army in. Um, but at the as, as things stand, Striker playing fantastically. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next match. Thanks for listening.